Welcome everyone to the session we got your code covered by Jitu uh, Patel. Thanks, thanks. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I hope all are doing well, and thanks for being here today for this session. And uh, really, thank to APM Conference guy giving me a chance to speak in this big forum. Thanks for that. Okay, uh, let's let's start the session. Um, today, I'm going to talk something uh, incredible importance in our uh, world of software development. That is code coverage. As my title, I mentioned, we got your code covered. To articulate this uh, article, these two things. One is how to maximizing the code quality of in a React Native, and we'll go, uh, we'll deep dive on the code coverage path. How to get the code coverage of React Native? Okay. Uh, let me, before that, uh, going forward, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Jitu Kumar Patel, and I'm an architect at Games Twenty Four X Seven, and my role uh, is to create tools solution that will make the life of Dev and QA team easy. Or you can just signify some kind of process which will make things easy for uh, both the platforms. Okay, uh, what 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 I want to solve uh, like what what is the main use case of this code coverage, right? So basically, I want to solve uh, solve this particular screen uh, while the QA is sleeping uh, and dev are sleeping. The, the, this uh, statement, right? Did I miss anything during testing, right? That should not be nagging in their mind. Like now somebody is asking, have you done the complete testing of this feature? Uh, I'll say yes, but I don't know how much I've covered from the dev side, dev side code, right? There's no metrics, no data, which can evaluate and tell me, okay, I've done hundred uh, percent testing coverage, right? To make sure everything is going perfectly fine to production. We are introducing some code coverage process in our testing uh, uh, process, uh, testing uh, life cycle. How, how this will help, right? Uh, so basically, uh, there, there are some cases which we found like going to the production, we saw there are some minor and critical issues are being missed, right? Uh, how, but it, it was a corner case, but that to evaluate what things are being missed, we need some data, right? To get the data, we can use this tool and get, okay, this path is missed because I have not covered this code from the dev side. I've done all the testing, but this part is, it's not being covered, right? So with this tool, we can get to know what corner cases what all uh, uh, code we are not covering during, during our automation or testing. So in this content, I'm I'm first uh, brief you uh, regarding what is code coverage. Second, which tool I'm using to uh, get the React Native code coverage. Uh, third one is the setup, how to set up with the real application, how to generate the code coverage after running the automation or manual testing. The conclusion. Uh, first, let me let me tell you why I choose uh, uh, React Native. Uh, because in today's market, a uh, uh, lot of companies are moving to React Native platform because you can write a code once and it, it will run on both iOS and Android platform. And there are a lot of benefits if you use uh, uh, React Native. It will be like uh, less resource, less maintenance, and easy to go to production. The first uh, content was what is code coverage, right? Uh, uh, Basically, if, if uh, I'll put a statement, I'll put I'm running automation, I'm running uh, manual testing, I'm doing manual testing and all. I just wanted a matrix which will tell me how much code coverage I've done from dev side code. So so it's kind of you'll get a confident, yeah, uh, if the 100% code coverage is done during manual and automation, it means I've covered all the happy path and I should not be getting any issue in the production, right? So that that's the that's code coverage. Uh, what benefit you will get where you will find out the edge cases scenario or missing cases scenario which are not being tested during your uh, testing cycle and it went to production. The next, uh, what, what uh, code coverage attributes we need to see? There's like four attributes. Uh, first one is the statement coverage, like in a class, how much statement is being covered during your testing. Branch, it's kind of EPL conditions are there. Uh, switch cases are there. You just have to check which all switch cases are being executed during your testing or what all if condition is being tested, else condition is being tested in your uh, testing. Line coverage in a particular class, how much line you are covering during your testing. And functional is the methods. The methods written in a particular class, how, man, how many methods you have covered during your testing. So these are the uh, four attributes which we need to identify during our testing while doing uh, the code coverage implementation. Okay, uh, which tool I'm using for React Native? Uh, 
So basically, you have heard this tool before also, uh, NYC Istanbul. This basically, this tool was used to get the uh, unit test coverage. Okay, but we are making use right now in functional automation, or you can say in functional testing, automation testing to get the code coverage of React Native. Okay, now let, let's jump how we have integrated this tool with our application. Uh, basically, uh, you have to do two things. One thing, uh, you have to integrate this as a dev dependency in your React Native code. Uh, beside, you can see the command which we can use to integrate uh, the NYC in our application. And the second command will be generating the code coverage. How to generate the code coverage after doing your testing or manual testing or automation uh, runs and all. But there is one limitation over here. Here first, uh, you should find out, like you have to add some code in your application which will uh, Active when you you create a dab more uh, application, not release mode application. So there will be a condition where you can put if the dab is true, then enable this code. Otherwise, don't you because it, otherwise it will go to production, right? Enabling this code and all this stuff, and it will make the performance uh, low of your application. So basically, there is a checkpoint where we can add uh, in the application. If the dab true is there, then enable this code. What this code does, uh, basically this code should be added by the dev team uh, in their application so that uh, when app is in background or inactive or kill, kill state, it will throw the code coverage data to our server. Okay. So basically this is a part from who is developing the React Native code. So basically they have to add, they have to identify where the app launch component is there and this, this particular uh, snapshot of code he has to add over there. So in, in this snapshot, you can see there is a coverage data, uh, coverage data, right? Send coverage data function is there. I've just added the uh, the code what is written over there. Here you can see the hard coded IP, but uh, we can pass from the Android activity. Like I want to throw this co coverage data to this IP, and you can replace this IP in runtime itself. It's not like you have to hard code it. From runtime only, you can just uh, change the IP and send it to the coverage server. Okay. How, how we are collecting the uh, coverage data, right? So basically I have an automation shoot uh, which has uh, uh, 200 cases and uh, I'm running parallelly on multiple phones, right? So when, when we start the automation, it will start triggering the uh, automation on multiple phones and this mode, uh, when the task is completes, it, it will throw all the coverage data to the code coverage server. So basically when I start the automation, I'm running a coverage server at uh, the same node or a different node, that node I'm passing in the application. Now application has the information, like who is testing, who is doing automation. They knows what all things is getting collected over there, application that code, and it will throw the coverage data to the code coverage server. That is the flow, architecture flow, how we have implemented in our company. So this is the coverage server, which is normally one, one uh, uh, server I'm running with the endpoint of coverage, which uh, where uh, when application uh, goes to background, will throw, okay, this many action was done in my in my UI, and this are the coverage data to the uh, the coverage server. It will throw or it it will throw all the information to the coverage server, and coverage server will dump that information in the local space. Okay, now I'll show the demo. Uh, Basically here in setup wise, what we did, we added a code in the uh, activity launcher or you can say app.tsx. Then we instrumented it uh, running that dev dependency code. Now I'm running my automation along with the manual test. Let me give the demo now. So basically manually, currently I've, I've just uh, started the coverage server. If you see, this is one server I'm running, which will uh, catch all the, all the code coverage done by uh, the automation phones or the manual testing and it'll dump in the local memory. Let me share my phone also. Okay, uh, so we have for this uh, demo, we have created one temp application or temporary application, which uh, we can use for this uh, demo. Uh, let me open that app. Okay.
let me delete it first uh, i think app went to background and uh, it sent the code coverage data okay okay now i'll share my screen This is a helper app which we have created for dev and QA. Uh, I have indicated the code coverage code here itself. Uh, I'll just click anything. You just remember which all component I've clicked. For example, I'm clicking happy hour. Uh, I'm just assigning some money. Submit, right? So just mark this this uh, here in this particular place we are, we have enabled our code coverage server. Let me kill the app. After killing the app, the code coverage data is thrown in the server, <laughs> and it is getting dumb. And it's kind of uh, a JSON file which will uh, 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 which has the information regarding which particular code has been clicked or has been run during your execution, right? So this, this kind of data will be accumulated over the code coverage server. If you are running multiple phones, right, then multiple files will be there. For example, I'm running, uh, I'm opening again, suppose you can consider this is a different uh, phone and the same app is open, uh, where I, I'm, work, uh, I'm clicking on the BIP component and assigning some money, okay, and and killing it so previously I, I did with one phone you got one coverage data now i kill i i tested with another phone and i killed it so as the method we have mentioned when the app is in inactive state or in background throw the whatever coverage data is there in the local memory so here i got the two coverage files right so in this way automation is running on 10 phones so you'll get 10 coverage file over here Now my automation run, manual testing, everything is done, right? So what is the next step, right? So next step is uh, to get the co coverage data, you have to run one command. That command, what it does, it will accumulate all the logs and dump in one single file. Okay, let me run that code. So that code is, it's a node, you just use node and it's written with uh, uh, JavaScript. You just call this method, run it. So what it does, the file, they, suppose there are 100 files, it will read each contain of 100 files and dump in a single file. The single file has a uh, the folder structure, you have to put in NYC uh, output, dot NYC output, and this file has all the information, which was there in individual file of code coverage. Now the last step, Last step is you have to run one command. That command basically will generate the code coverage for you. Okay. This is the command which I've showed in the second slide. Uh, this one slide where we have to add as a dependency and to get the code coverage data, this is the command you have to run. You just run it. It will generate a folder, uh, coverage folder where you will get the whole information of the coverage data. I think you remember I have touched two, two, value, uh, two component. One component was uh, uh, basically happy hour. One component was VIP, right? Just open it, go inside. You can see over here is VIP I clicked. This is uh, showing the code coverage of VIP and uh, happy hour I've clicked, right? So if you go inside, it will give each line code which are being called at that instance when you have done the testing and all. Basically down didn't call because the first uh, API got failed over here. So this uh, coverage is coming on red color which indicates it was not being called during your testing. So you can identify in this way what all code I have covered, what all code I have not covered. I have the metrics which can say whether my testing is 100% done or not right now. Because after entering this tool, you will get to know what all things you did and what is the output, what is the matrix, what are the test case you are covering over there. So all the information is there so that you will get a you will get a confident whether the testing is completely done or not. So same same there are multiple methods. Uh, only that uh, first got failed and uh, after that I was not able to go inside uh, the other methods. So all the methods showing in red. Similarly, it will give the all the classes, whatever is there, which are being called, which are not being called, which are not even touched, 
So all the information we'll get in this uh, UI itself, the index.html file. And uh, yeah, so this give you an outlook how much testing you have done uh, during your, uh, during your, uh, uh, the testing phase and all. Okay, uh, so basically this is the UI which you, you can take the reference what all things are being covered, how the things are not covered, even each line informations are there. Uh, yeah, that's done from my side. Uh, uh, any questions, uh, you just... I did. Yeah, so we have a couple of questions in our Q&A. Uh, first is by Ashish. What is the good code coverage percentage according to the industry standards? So basically what in our company, we have make sure like 75% uh, from the front end side and 85% uh, from the back end side, because there are a lot of cases which uh, you can think it will, it will never come in the production, but we're handling it. Mm -hmm. So as per our standard, we have maintained this one 75% uh, percent from uh, front end side and 85% uh, from back end side. Next we have by, uh, so Avi, uh, Avinash has two questions. Um, does it need a step of instrument to, uh, does it need a step of instrument the app before running the automation and will it work on a hybrid apps where only few screens are using react native? So basically we have, uh, we have a hybrid app, which has react native unity, uh, react combined. Okay. So basically I've given the demo on the react native. If the part, right. Uh, basically how it, uh, instrument and get the information is kind of. Uh, you have to get the GitHub link over there. Uh, I just missed one point. Uh, let me show you. Basically, I'm running the server where actually my source code is present. When you are running from Jenkins to get the code uh, coverage, now you have to download the code uh, source code of the application there, and you have to run the command. The HTML will read the uh, the syntax of the folder structure, and it will generate the code coverage. That was first. Uh, so second thing. Uh, it's a hybrid app. We have different tools for different, uh, uh, you can say different platforms. For example, Unity, we have a different tool. Android, we have a different tool. Uh, iOS, we have a different tool. We can combine it and get the code coverage. It's not like a uh, code coverage represent a uh, whole application, but individual module, you can get the code coverage. Gotcha. Um, I think then uh, Ohm is asking how to achieve this in a native iOS app. Um, and similarly, on the same lines, we have one more question. Uh, does this approach work with Flutter app code base as well? Okay, uh, I can give the answer for uh, Android, uh, Kotlin and uh, Java. I was able to get it. Uh, iOS, we have a, I, uh, uh, the Xcode build, we have a flag called coverage true uh, that we have tried, but uh, uh, things uh, we don't have like, we don't have the client all like client uh, working awesome in iOS platform, so mm -hmm. we we keep it aside. But yeah, uh, same thing we can use for Android, iOS, and uh, other 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 uh, other like Python. We have React, we have React Native, we have so we can do it. It's it's not like uh, it's a limitation for React Native. We can do for Android, iOS also. Gotcha. Um, then we have a question by our one of the attendee does it mean that ideally qa should have access to the entire uh, entirety of the application source code so basically for me right it's a it's a collaboration between qa and dev right uh, it's not like uh, qa will give the code coverage but they should understand in the modern testing uh, techniques right qa should get inside the dev code and tell what is wrong what is right mm -hmm. right that that should be there so the product which will come out, right, it will be bug free, mm -hmm. right? So in my philosophy, I, I'm the guy what I, I'll tell, get inside the code, understand what is the architecture, what on code they're handling. There's some cases they, are, they might not be handling. So you can pitch in, you can understand the code and you can tell them because it's a collaboration. It's not like QA only to tell them, okay, this code is dead, uh, remove it. But QA should also know what, what that code means, what they are doing over that code. But my understanding, right? It's it, 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 it from different guy. So, right. So um, then we have a couple of more questions on the code coverage. Um, some of them are like, how, what if app or application not developed by React Native? How do we ensure hundred percent code coverage? 
or how do you ensure 100% code coverage manual and automation testing included if what's the app is not developed by react native how we ensure that's what i told right we have we have code coverage not i'm i'm, I'm just shown for uh, uh, react native there are tools which will give you the code coverage of other platform also so you can use that tool and uh, get the code coverage of your uh, testing uh, or automation that makes sense uh, then we have a few more what is the best tool available in market for the code coverage for android and apple native apps can you suggest and can we integrate this with sim ci cd okay uh, i'll i'll, I'll uh, tell one one tool which is paid as of now uh, that is rk wallet you can search in google uh, that has the capability to get the code coverage of all the platforms ios android react uh, python everything you can go ahead and do it open source i'll publish a medium paper where i'm putting uh, the uh, the code coverage for android ios uh, react native react flutter uh, i've never tried i can try and update you guys uh rest python is there uh, this this five tool i i can publish a paper where you can uh, get the idea how to get the code coverage cool uh, i think uh, these are the questions that we had in our q and a so uh, thank you jitu uh, thank you for joining and sharing your uh, insights with us